Hey guys, this is Blendmaster here with another tutorial, and today I'm going to show you how to create this picture of a shockwave in Blender. So first thing I'm going to do is delete this cube and this lamp by pressing X, and I'm going to add a torus object. This is going to be the base of our shockwave, and I want to rotate it on the X axis by pressing R, and if you press X it locks it so it only rotates along the X axis and I want it to rotate exactly 90 degrees so I'll just type that in and press enter. I'll go to front view and orthographic by pressing 1 and 5 on the numpad and I'll tab into edit mode. What we want to do is increase the thickness of this torus object and to do that you have to scale along the normals because if you were to just scale it up normally you would just be increasing the size and to increase the thickness you have to press alt s. So I'll just scale it up and I'll type in 0.25 and I think that's good. Now to get these uh, sharp outbursts and shockwave fractals I'm going to pre come down here to select where it says select and press random and what this does it selects a bunch of vertices randomly and we'll just be pressing S to scale it up slightly and then select another a set of random vertices and just scale them down and scale them in and just keep on repeating this process until we get a shape that we like and you can do this until you get a shape that you like I'm going to do this a few more times and I think that's good so I'll tab out of edit mode I'm going to press control 2 which is the shortcut for adding a subdivision service modifier and I'll set the shading to smooth. Now what we want to do is add some displacement modifiers so that we can create um, more of these ridges and stuff and I'm going to press new shader and name it big because these are going to be some big bumps and I'll set the strength down to 0.5 or 2.5 my bad and if we press this it will go back to the texture panel and we want these to be uh, the size at 0.5 and you can see that it doesn't look that good because all of these vertices are meeting at the center and to fix that all you have to do is tab into edit mode and select everything and scale it up and you can see that they're still going into the center so I'll scale it up again by 2 and that's starting to look better. So now I'll go back and add another subdivision surface modifier and set it to 2. I'll just collapse all of these so that they're smaller and I'll add another displacement modifier. I'm going to name this one small. And I'll go to the texture panel and type in 0.1 for the size. And if I go back I'll set this strength to 0.25 and that's starting to look a lot like the shockwave we want and if you wanted to adjust the thickness you can just tab into edit mode and press alt s again and scale it so it's not as thick as you want but I'm just going to leave it like this for now since I think it looks good and now it's time for us to set up our materials and we're going to be doing that in cycles so if you come up here you can click cycles render and I'm going to change the background color to black now for the material we're going to open up a new window for the node editor I'll press new and I'm going to change this diffuse to an emission shade and what this will do is it'll create light that the object emits so that there will be no need for any lamps or anything and we're going to use a mix shader to combine this with a transparent shader Now if you press shift Z you can go into render view and you can see what it's doing here. It's um, making it half transparent while it still emits light. So when these um, faces overlap it creates a brighter white area and that's sort of what we want. But if you look in the image we had earlier you can see that the edges are what's emitting light and inside it's more transparent. So to get that effect we'll be using a layer weight node for our factor 
and I'll be using the facing value and you can see that the edges are now transparent and the inside is emitting light so to fix that we'll just invert these by switching their places and you can start to get the effect that we see the effect that we want and the emission right now is too strong so I'm gonna change the blend down to about 0.1 or I'll bring it down to 0 0.01 0 0.05 since that's a little too dark and I'll make the emission color pure white so it's a little brighter I'll change the strength to 1.5 and I think that's good so I'll just close this window go back to solid view and now we're going to set up the camera so what we're going to do is press Control alt 0 to snap it to this view and I'll select the camera and press Alt-G. What this does is it positions it exactly in the center of our scene. So now we can just move this along the y-axis and our shock wave will be in the center. And you can also press G and the middle mouse button and drag it back to zoom out. So I'm going to leave it right there and I'll just go over to the render panel and press render to quickly get a render of our shockwave. Now I'll go over to the compositing layout and the shortcut for that is just control left arrow and I'll press use nodes backdrop I'll press control up arrow to make it full screen. Now I'll just drag this over here and I'm gonna press control shift and left click it to bring up the viewer node. Now to get the color that we want for this shockwave, I'll add an RGB curve and I'm going to duplicate another one for later. So in this one, if you go to the R, it'll change the value of the red in our image. And I'm just going to drag it down because I want a bluish image. And I'm going to bring up the green a little bit and then I'll bring up the blue to about here. So that's the kind of color that I want and I'm going for. And if you look here, you can see some white highlights there. And to do that, we're going to use this RGB node. So I'm going to plug in the image into this and view it. And we're going to use this first one, the C, which will affect the contrast in our image. I'm going to drag this up here to make the whites a little brighter. I'll drag this down to make the dark parts darker. And that's good. So now I'll just press Shift A, Color, Mix, and change it to Add. And I'll add the two together. And as you can see right now, the whites are too strong, but we can change that later when we re render. And what I want to do is add a small blur to this. So I'm going to press Shift A, Filter, Blur, and I'm going to plug in the one that was fully colored without the highlights. I'm going to switch it to Fast Gaussian, Relative, Y, and I'll set it to 1 by 1. Then I'll duplicate this Add node and plug in the other Add node and set the factor to 0.5. And I'm going to make sure that the Add node is on top so that it's more dominant than the blur. And we'll plug this into the composite node. So now when we go back we can change our material so that this white isn't as bright. And I'm going to go to the shockwave material, open up the emission, and I'm going to set it back to 1 and see if that's good enough. And now I'll go back and render it really quickly. And that's pretty much it, but I think the whites are still a little too dominant, so I'm going to just tweak the materials a little more. I'm going to go to the layer weight and change it to 0 0.01. I think that's better. And this is all to what you want for your material. So I'm going to change that back to 2 to get it brighter now that it's thinner, the area that's emitting light. Okay, and I think this is good now. So 
to save it I'll just press F3 and I'm gonna save it as Shockwave and that's pretty much it I hope you enjoyed this tutorial if you have any suggestions for future tutorials or something that you want to see done in blender just leave a comment below and I'd love to see what you did with this tutorial so share your results in the comments as well and thanks for watching bye